Hello fellow Mithrudians, this is Paul and you are watching the weekly live stream. I've really been looking forward to doing this one all week because I haven't gotten to work on Mithruna much. Um, work's been really busy as, as usual, hopefully it'll calm down here in a little bit. Uh, <laughs> I've already got a heart blowing away, that's nice. Um, let's go ahead and thank the patrons while we're here. Teamwork makes the dream work. I really appreciate you guys backing me. Thanks so much. So let's get started right away. We'll see how much we get done tonight. Now, once again, up in the upper left corner of the screen here is the link to download the January release. I'm currently working on the February release, but we're a little behind. I'm hoping to get it done mid-April. Well, we're almost to mid-April, so we'll see. Um, I hope to have more time to work on it soon because um, my work and ride and so on schedule will loosen up a little bit. Um, so this one's saying three concurrent viewers, this one's saying no concurrent viewers, but we'll figure out what's going on. All right, anyway, let's minimize that and um, oh, my screen just went black. Okay. Yes, yeah, so pay no attention to the thing that looks a bit like a ship here um, with no sails or masts because I was playing with something else. Um, let me go ahead and uh, come back up to our little test world up here, our little test town. Yeah. So this is where we've been experimenting so far. Oh, this is the old experimental town. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I went back to here. Okay. Let me uh, make it a little brighter. Yep. Cool. Yeah, it's weird. This uh, little pop-out display never seems to update right. Um, so what we're going to work on today is the fact that there's... I'm going to try to tighten up the the tool activity stuff because re really there's only one thing you can do right now is if you press and hold the left mouse, it'll swing it left and right, and you'll see the sword is not oriented correctly. Um, I want to add at least one up and down slice because if you see um, when we have the pickaxe ah there the there this is updating now so when we see you have the pickaxe it's nice that it you know cuts side to side but it would really also be nice to be able to cut up and down um, and potentially have you know a full over the shoulder swing you know a full you know, over the shoulder swing and then a shorter sort of, um, if you're in a tight place, just kind of up to your chest and back down again kind of thing without having to, um, you know, sort of the finer chiseling kind of thing. So we got to like eventually reconcile the fact that you can see that in her hand, um, you know, it's side to side like that, which is why it works like this and the sword the sword is set up for overhand slicing, which I would say is the accurate handhold. Um, but it's, you know, doing a side to side, so it's like hitting with the flat of the blade. So at some point we're going to have to contend with that. This is sort of designed around the fact that originally I was going to give everybody control. Um, but now we're uh, to the point where I'm going to have some predefined swings, so we're going to have some predefined animations with some parameterization of those. Like currently, the side-to-side -side swing is um, a mix of multiple animations, which is why I can, you know, which is why she can swing it up here and swing it down here and swing it down here, which seems like a reasonable thing. And then the, the up and down animation will be more fixed because just turning your body would would mess with that. Okay. Um, you may notice that down at my feet, there's this little uh, crosshair that appears. This is part of a refactoring I'm doing. Um, yeah, so uh, g give me a minute and then I'm going to talk about, um, don't let me forget, I'm going to talk about how the control scheme is going to work, which I think will give some flexibility um, and some coolness. But uh, so these little things that appear at the bottom of our feet are because when I was dealing with the um, block chopping stuff, we I ended up in a place where okay, so I've already got that one. So I, uh, let's uh, 
Let's go back and select the pickaxe. Um, if you see, let me go find something good to chop. So let's see if I chop this right. Um, I will get a first couple hits in and it missed. This block is actually not really here. If I hit a different one, uh, hmm, can I hit something lower? Okay. So on the server, there's a block missing here or here, right? The fact that I couldn't hit it means that it's not really there anymore. Um, these two blocks are not really here. Um, do you already have inventory? Yeah, hit I, you get inventory. That's what this is. That's where you can select the different tools you have. Um, and that's what, how you get to the object tool. I'm sure you knew this. Or maybe I... Maybe I'm misunderstanding the question. Anyway, real quick. Um, so the fact that these two blocks are hanging around here, they're not on the server, they're only on the client. And that has to do with um, what's called the model view state, which I've renamed now. Um, but I'll show you sort of what a uh, sort of spaghetti this has turned into. So you've got the model impl, which has all this stuff in for running on the background thread, running on the current thread, and queuing up lighting changes, and it just got ridiculous. And when I tried to add other things that need to interact with these models in some way, like in this case, you know, replace the current view with the one that's been regenerated, um, we end up in a place where I, lo I basically lost events that were coming from the server because while those events were coming in, I didn't have the model to apply them to and so on and so forth. So this is all sort of finally collapsing under its own weight. And so I'm writing a new one that's going to be much simpler. And currently the only thing the new one does is put that crosshair at the place of the object. So any objects we find, you'll see it's got that's got a little crosshair in there. Um, there's going to be little crosshairs. Basically, every object only appears as this crosshair. But this one, the model view state is not um, updating, you know, dynamic objects yet. This is just the static position, which for a player updates every few seconds. Um, so it's it's still being developed, and it's the kind of thing I need like full attention to, and I can't talk while I develop it. Um, so I I picked something else to do with the live stream, and this uh, this stuff is super important. This um, going here. Yeah. Oh, um, no, I don't have that yet, um, but it's coming. There's So there's going to be two types of uh, material inventory. I'll make a quick sidetrack through that. Two types of material inventory. The stuff that you chip off of here is actual rock, and it will lay on the ground. And you can choose to pick it up, but that will go in your inventory as, you know, gravel or whatever little chunks of stuff and you'll only be able to carry so much it'll only be a little bit stackable and it will fill up your inventory fast the idea being that if you wanted to carry a lot of actual raw material chopped away from blocks you would have to use a wagon or something else or you know you flip over to your build wand and then you know you could slurp it all up and it would go it would get stored into your build wand for a later use but again it that would break down the materials and you could no longer directly get them back again. So, but let me talk about the way I envision activities to work. Um, you know, and I preface this with a lot of what I do is an experiment, right? We're going to see if it works. So the idea being um, when you create an item or when you, uh, when you're, when you have an item like a sword, um, It'll have a like default handle, um, and and that default default handle where you hold it, and that default handle will have a default set of activities. Okay, activities being the act of swinging or stabbing. Activity, um, you know, swinging uh, left, right. Uh, left, right, 
um, swing up down um, you know uh, stab whatever um, different kinds of activities right um, you maybe swing uh, down to up you know right to left and all these different things so you have activities and then um, so the way I'm thinking of it now is the middle mouse or the alternate right middle mouse um, so wait 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 so when you have an item you, you can put the handle wherever you want if you want to hold the sword by the blade so be it right maybe there's a good reason you want to hold your sword by the blade and whack people with the hilt who knows right that's up to you you can choose to reconfigure that item and put the handle wherever you want. That means when you're creating custom stuff, you can put the handle wherever you want, as long as it's you know physically on that object. Um, set the set of activities and their order. So then uh, middle mouse will select an activity. That's what we're going to work on tonight, right? So, um, so maybe use, you know, uh, swing left to right, um, mouse to select swing up to down, you know, all while pressing the, the button and then it, it'll just switch to it, right? Switch swing up to down. So you can chain these activities together. An activity has um, sort of a ramp up. Uh, if you um, if you release, so activity press to start, right? Ramp up release will abort with no animation. Lead in. Uh, release will just abort so when this is actually already in so if i'm standing and i um press to click uh this is the wrong so let's use the sword because it's really let's use the axe because it's very very um so if i press to click the axe there's a period where if i just press like i just clicked i don't know am i um i forget am i still running the um the mouse stuff um, mouse it put I can put it up here and then you guys can see what I'm clicking okay so if I just click nothing happens right because that's the default click if I well that's the default click if I was to click on to talk to somebody or whatever there's like a a ramp up which is if I just click it for a second um, it's not supposed to actually start the animation. If I click and hold, it starts to move up to the swing position and then it'll start swinging and looping. And so this is the actual activity. Everything else was lead up and if I release, then it you know goes back to default. But the idea being that you could chain these things together so you get the wrap up, the lead in, and then the actual swing, um, recover, um, back to swing. Right? And so if I abort in here, um, then it will, um, you know, then the action's canceled and, and it goes. But the idea I have for combos would be that there's two different kinds of chains. There's sort of your root level um, swings, which, you know, when you're not pressing middle mouse selects next activity. Sort of like any of the other objects where you could um, yeah, I cannot spell activity for some reason. Um, so this is like any of the other objects where middle mouse would, you know, change what you have in your, your center there. But then there's also the ability to chain, um, chain swings. So at some point as a, as a user, as a player, you'll be able to configure that, you know, once I've started a swing, I want to chain these three swings together. So maybe you make your own combo, um, which is... Uh, your combo is, uh, you know, left to right, up to down, 
and and then so that's going to be your combo that you like to do or maybe you stab in there somewhere right stab up to down and so as long as you're holding the mouse down time the middle mouse wheel mouse button down time the middle mouse wheel correctly to select next in the chain so the idea you could configure these combos and as i add more animations and more stuff um you know until we get to like vr level control where i can actually swing my sword i think this allows us to have certain combos so like if you wanted to set up the pickaxe to you know swing overhand swing overhand swing overhand maybe there's a um uh, another kind of swing you would want to do like underhand or something like because you've already chopped away all the top of a b block and now you want to chop the bottom and then you could use the mouse wheel to switch back and forth between those and I've mapped out sort of a flow chart on what happens when you abort during that and so on you know when it starts um, oh neat oh yeah I guess that would be kind of cool so it's like they're all sitting there with you in your room kind of like augmented reality so anyway that's the way the swinging is supposed to work and so most of it is controlled by the scripting layer currently when I press the mouse button it says start swing and then I release this as end swing and then everything else is in the activity so I think we have all of the stuff we need to do this except for a real animation and I don't know if anybody wants to watch me do that in blender especially since I'm gonna have to copy it for all um, you know, f four models, and I, I'm not, I'm definitely 100% not going to copy animations while we're on this because I'd have to do a little research. I know there's a way to copy animations from, you know, blend file to blend file, but I recall it not being 100% straightforward. Um, anyway, so let's go ahead and get started coding now that we're almost 20 minutes into the live stream. Um, oh, oh, one more thing I want to talk about. So, um, so why did I have this ship over here, right? Um, I will mention that. So I made this dock in this ship because one of the things that the model view state, that thing that's holding this guy down here, um, one of the things it does is, is also work with the large objects. So most of these um, placed objects like if I go up here now and you look in the town, you won't see any of those objects anymore. They're not actually there because there's a certain distance that they fade off. Um, but that doesn't make any sense for, you know, ships, large ships, vehicles, airships, things like that. Um, you're going to need to be able to... Oh, well, that's interesting that uh, hmm, there's potentially some bugs still because we shouldn't have these little guys floating in the air over here. They're actually leftovers from that over there so there's a problem um, that's why that class is new anyway um, so I needed some big objects to mess with uh, you can copy the animations at runtime you mean in my game anyway um, I just mean I have characters which already pre have animation sets in blender and I need to go into Blender and add a new animation, and I need to add it to all of them, and um, you know, rerun them through my asset pipeline. I'm not sure anybody wants to watch that happen. And I know there's a way you can copy animations from one blend file to another. Anyway, so I made this ship because I was bored one night and tired of work and was not in the mood to code. It's gonna be, don't tell anybody, it's gonna be an airship, which is why it doesn't have any masts. And so, and that's also kind of why it's small. Um, you know, it'll have like a couple sort of hot air kind of balloons in here. So it's just kind of small cabin where there could be, um, and a little cargo hold down below. And then you, up here would be, you know, where the controls would be, you know, when there are controls. And there'll be you know, maybe some propellers sticking out the back, some fans. Um, but I needed a big object to be able to have the there's the sort of the large objects that are far objects you can see them from much farther away they're handled slightly different so i needed a test object to do that long story short i created this cool wand um 
which lets me um, yeah I mean I could do it but the so the thing is is each of these is gonna have to be tweaked because um, while they're all based on this initial female model you know that's why the males currently walk like a girl and jog like a girl um, eventually they're gonna have to be tweaked you know for each character model and size and shape and so on you know there are there are going to be some models that um, the default swing set doesn't work I my original plan was to get fade fully working and then just base all the other models off her but I got bored looking at the same character all the time so then I created you know the elven or the Godwin the Godwin male female and so on um, anyway what I was gonna say so this wand right here lets me extract things from the world now these two things the dock and the boat are a little too close to each other but if I click on them it extracts that and writes that as a uh, as a block object so if I went over to here and I run block it oh wait I have to copy it over um, client what do I call them extracts and what was it called it was called um, 2311. Yes, it's the other one. Uh, it names it by the, the place. Um, source main resources. Shaper. Oh, source main shaper. Black, black files. Um, anyway, this is kind of cool because it lets me, um, build things in the world where I can see the scale of them I can see how they interact with the water I can see how they interact with um, you know what the size and lighting I can see what everything they're gonna look like in the world I could design houses this way and then click to export them man that's so slow I think it's because we've got this running so I'm gonna go ahead and exit out of here just remember what that boat looked like in the dock. You'll see in a second. Okay. So you should go much faster now. Yeah. Between the having the live stream running, um, and uh, the game at the same time. So yeah, I, since I just copied it directly, that's what it looks like. So there, it sucked. Because these objects were too close together, um, you know, it doesn't know. This is like a block right next to a block. It doesn't know that there's a gap there, so it extracted the whole thing. But this is going to be tremendously useful for modeling content for the game. You know, anytime I come up with a new building, it's so much easier to design it in the game than it is to do it in here and hope it looks right in the game. So I can design it in the game, then click on it. It, the, the extractor one knows the difference between blocks I've placed and blocks that were generated as part of the world. But anyway, that's what that cool little ship looks like. Um, there will be a version that has a mast, you know, two masts um, for sailing. But I was more interested in a you know small small boat to turn into an airship. And I started looking at proportions and things. Anyway, so that's a cool little tool. Um, it probably won't be in the standard player inventory, but uh, I find it super useful. Okay, so let's get started on the actual topic for this evening, which is swings. And so before we make our own animations, what I think I'm going to do, um, yeah, um, so just a, another teaser for those of you who are actually make it to the live stream um, or are watching this. I was playing with proportions. So I had like I took a side shot of um, that flying ship and I was playing with proportions for the, you know, the air bladders. And there's a I don't want to let off too much. I don't want to spoil anything, but there's a specific construction for these where they come from. So it's very important that I size them correctly. Um, but yeah, so I was trying to work out proportions and I had like loaded up some different, um, you know, concept art that I found online to kind of get, 
an idea of what scale I should use. Ultimately, again, it's going to come down to um, trying it in the game and seeing you know, what size bladder actually works. Um, but that's kind of the aesthetic I'm going for. And these will be closer together. I just didn't like the way they overlapped in Photoshop and I or in F Photopia and um, or Photo P, whatever it's pronounced as. And, but they'll be closer together, like if they were smooshed together. I I don't like the I don't like this look, for example, the separated out version. They'll be smashed together, um, which will be better for larger ships anyway that might have more or bigger bladders. But yeah, airships is like since the beginning, since the earliest concept art of the game, I've had airships both with bladders and with uh, anti-grav and you know uh, flying sails and things like that so there'll be both kinds um, and even a ship like this there's basically a material that you can refine that will kind of um, deflect gravity it's part of the one of the magic forces is gravity and so there's a certain magic element that will um, refined properly you can line the bottom of your ships that will lighten them as far as um, you know the the gravity effect um, and so that that's why you can float a whole big ship like this with cargo and just like those two small bladders and so there's a bunch of buoyancy and ratios I have to work out and the source of these bladders I have to figure out what size what's their maximum and minimum size and stuff like that um, I want that to be a surprise, so I don't want to. Anyway, um, back to what we're starting here. So in the player driver, we have this start and end activity. Currently, it's hard coded. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and set up the scripting side real quick to allow us to have more than one swing. So what we'll go to, I believe this is in the test objects because everything, every one of these is a test object at this point. Um, so I'm going to steal a little code here and see. The axe, okay, so these are at the top. Swingable item, okay. Okay, so we'll make this a part of swingable item. Um, We'll call it swing right and swing down. Just to have two different modes to mess with. Or with two different swings. Yeah. Swing mode. I don't know. It's all the same. Um, and I don't think I did anything with the middle mouse. So if we go down to... We're going to steal some code from the test one because the test one has a really flexible um, mode thing. And I'm going to steal that. Uh, yes, yeah, so on equip. Just to uh, set the initial modes um, so we want I really should have super types up at the top okay so on equip um, yeah okay so I need to leave that comment in I need to leave that one in um, so this one we want swings and um, yeah so am I using da, da, da. I think then test one focus is my runtime Yeah, f for no. Oh, I I only use it in here, so that's fine. Um. 
so swing okay yeah swing focus um, all right let's call it swing index because that's what it is um, so we've got the modes we have the swing index eventually these will be loaded from config you know runtime config right now I'm hard coding them of course um, so yeah the focus would be not mode swings swings I could, I could have kept the same name I suppose so we want the text to appear and to set the swing index so that we can easily calculate it again and then um, what did I call it oh we can call this whatever we want the um, current swing okay and actually whenever we change that no that's fine that's fine that's fine that's fine and so for this we will grab the current swing swing equals get um hmm. let's look at how we get the mode down here do, 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 main click object yeah so we do this and swingable item. Oh yeah, the uh, oh, you know what? I should call these activities. Uh, uh, types. There, so there we go. Replace, place, place, replace. Replace, replace, replace. Um, activity index. Place, replace. And then current activity. There we go. All right. And so activity equals env get their current activity. And then we'll set the default to swing right for now. It's a little squishy having that string here and here, but. And then, so that'll always have a value. Okay. And we will end whatever the current activity is, which means we can switch it at runtime we want when we change activities um i need to leave a placeholder is there a current activity um we need to now oh, actually it's um it's not up to this it's the um the player driver is supposed to be smart enough to deal with it okay so in activity whatever our current activity is <clears throat> and yep we do this for press super run object hit So main press block. Okay. So main press is if your mouse is basically your cursor is over nothing. Main press object is if your cursor is over an object. Um, and main click object is the release of that, which I really need to have a separate release. Um, and so then 
this is when you're pressing it over a block. So for swingable items, we basically want to do this in all cases. Um, but obviously when we release, those are end activities. So this should still work the same as before because um, because player driver is ignoring this value other than logging it. So if we wanted to see, we could run it real quick and see that I haven't messed something up. And then we'll be in the Java code. Yeah, this for some reason this week I've had little snippets of music pop into my head, melodies for things, different activities in Mithruna. So I've been trying to record little snippets. I got like little 20 second snippets. So one of these days we'll have to do some music composition. I keep saying that, but for reals, man. Get the webcam set up looking at my keyboard over here, my music keyboard. Get OBS set up on the computer that I do music on. It might already be set up over there. Okay, I think the sun is coming up. Yep. Okay, so I should, st let me make sure I'm still holding. Nope, I grab the extractor one so you want to re-grab one of these guys any of this yep swing right swing down uh, speaking of music any riffs or songs you recommend to learn to improve my playing um, guitar ah uh, well I mean what I don't know what skill level you are I'm not a high skill level um, but I do have some things that I learned to play that I thought were hard and, and I find them to be a good exercise. Uh, every breath you take by the police is a great finger stretcher and pick control and mute control, all kinds of stuff. It is a tricky one to play. And I find that it's tricky from a, my hand starts to hurt if I use too much pressure kind of thing. And so it's, it teaches me all kinds of things about that um and it's not overly difficult to play once you've sort of learned how to hold your hand but it always impresses people who uh, like i've seen some people uh who are way better guitarists than me who had just never learned to play it and then i start playing it and they go oh i've never i i gotta see this i didn't know somebody could actually play that <laughs> so it's kind of cool um but yeah so that's all I that's all I can say. Um, I have like some other tricks that I recommend for people who are not real familiar with the fretboard. There's uh, coming from piano. I learned some specific things anyway. So so we're all swinging the same no matter what. Um, but the uh, swing right and swing left selection is working. We can see down in the bottom there. So now we can start implementing the actual ones. But um, so just a real quick guitar thing for anybody. So I actually had considered making a video on this because it was something I had been playing guitar. I took, I had been playing, I've been playing guitar um, for a long time, but self-taught and, you know, I learned just enough to do what I needed to do. So I knew power chords, never learned leads. Um, when my kids started taking lessons, I started taking lessons because I was going to be in the music store anyway. So I took guitar lessons and, you know, learned some scales and I can, I can, I know where the pentatonic scale is and all the boxes, that kind of thing, lame stuff like that. And I knew, I know enough to like muddle through my solos. If you hit my SoundCloud, you can see all that. Um, but uh, there was like a, a sort of a moment where the fretboard unlocked for me and um i i've wanted to, i've almost wanted to make a video on it if <laughs> it's just so out of character for my channel and it's probably obvious to some people 
Um, so I'm trying to think how to explain it in like five minutes or less, right? Um, so you've got, you know, the low E string, um, the A string, the D string, the G string, the B string, and the E string. So let's label these real quick. I apologize for anybody who does not <laughs> like my tangents, but uh, so let's just, uh, oh God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do it when you get into the music part of the game. Fits right in. Yeah, that's true. We could talk about that. Yeah, so we'll talk about that. Remind me when we start composing music to talk about this trick. Um, I'll just give you a hint, right? The key is um, these three strings right here. I call these the piano chord strings. And I'll explain, you know, basically this um, D, G, and B. I call those the piano chord strings. And I'll explain why when I have a piano in front of me and why that unlocked the fretboard for me. Um, but yeah, it'll be way clearer when I have a camera that could show you the piano and the guitar and stuff like that. And we could get it. So yes, we'll put a pin in that and I'll talk about it in a music composition live stream. Okay. Back to work. Da, 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 da. Blah, blah, blah. So we want to go to player driver. And the first thing we want to do is basically split activity into two classes. Um, we will make this one. Uh, for, uh, eventually, I'm going to parameterize some of this. We'll make this the left right activity. So this will be the swing left to right. No, right to left. <sighs> Right, right, swing, uh, let's call it the swing left activity. So we start on the right, we swing left. Ah, oh, dang. Okay. And so we go here. Yep, dates are all right. Um, swing left activity. I suspect that, well, I know for a fact, when I get into this, there's going to be some reuse between these things because a lot of this math is going to be identical for all of them and you'll see that when I cut and paste this into the up down version um, so let's make a swing down activity okay um, swing down activity Yes, 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 yes. And so we'll just continue to use the same swing animation, but we're going to, it's it's a parameterized um, thing where uh, the time sets where we are in the, in the left, right swing and the mix sets uh, sort of what our up down pitch is because it's really a, animation at the top and an animation at the bottom and I mix between them. Um, so for an up down swing temporarily I'm just kind of kind of invert these parameters so that we use X for the mix and um, yeah X for the no well yeah I mean sort of but we're basically going to switch X and Y so Y will be the thing we do time based on and X won't be a pitch it'll just be 0.5 that kind of thing um okay so swing up swing down activity becomes an interface so we don't need any of that garbage okay so that dun, dun, doink. and i leave the publics in we're not supposed to but i do it anyway um okay so these both should implement activity And I d implements. Man, now that you've asked me that question about guitar, I really want to do the music composition one cause so that I can talk about that. <laughs> All right. So swing like the activity, just like the one we've got. 
swing down, we're going to, everywhere there's an X, we're going to do a Y, and everywhere there's a Y, there, we're going to do an X. So I have to concentrate for a minute just to make sure I switch them correctly. Y, 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 X equals 0 0.5. Ah. Okay. So time always in the middle. Mix is the one that animates. Um, we don't need any pitch control here. Yep, the ramp up is the time we don't do anything. So this is, yep, before the lead in, we're only, hmm, we're moving to where we want to be. So X and then our target is 0 0.5. We want to be in the middle. Um, so this is Y, 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 and then X is 0 0.5 for now. This, <laughs> this is why we need to animate the swing because this is gonna whack her in the head every time, I think. Okay, so we've got, they're gonna do different things, whether they do the right thing or not, they're gonna do different things. Um, so we know we have enough to play with um so we need to make a temporary little map string activity uh you know though i think i actually want i think we rather than having to recreate them every time though that was my original thing let's make sure hmm, let's make sure they all have a reset on them which basically will reinitialize them to constructed parameters um, just because I don't feel like creating factories right now and everything else should be the same like my original intent was to create a new activity every time and I still need to do that hmm I still think I need to do that because there's going to be a way that they get chained together and so on I don't think I can pre-initialize them all like this but um But we'll see. Okay. Um, where do we create the rig shape? And the anim pump. Okay, so here's where we will set up our activities. Because they will be player. Oh, they won't be player specific. They will be tool specific. Um, no, no. They're model. They're rig specific. The tool, tool will show. Will tell us which swings we can use right then. But the model itself defines the different, yeah, yeah. Um, so activities, put, swing left, new swing left, activity, and I think it was rig shape anim pump. Rig shape and pump. Rig shape and pump. Swing down activity. Okay. All right. So if we start an activity and there is already an activity. Uh, 
Oops. Log warn no activity for name return. Okay. Um, if this current if uh, can I type activity equals no, not equal to null reset it so this is equal to the current activity uh, let's keep that around Okay, so um, if this doc, uh, if current activity is not equal to null, then just in case, we'll reset it and set it to null. Okay. Um, yeah. So eventually we'll have like a, a potentially a queue, whereas if we start an activity while another one is running. Um, so that's the other part of this is the general way I designed this back from the original Mithruna is that um, regular mouse clicks are the right hand or the main hand. Um, oops. Uh, control plus mouse clicks are the left hand or the off hand. Friday night coding, the best night coding. Yeah, there you go. It's Lando Calrissian. Um, so this is the way it was supposed to work originally. And so always, even when we could control even when the idea was to control the sword directly, the idea being that if you started to click and then swiped down really fast, that that would initiate the downward swipe and you could release the mouse, hit control and do something else. So the idea being that maybe if you can juggle your regular mouse clicks and your control mouse clicks in with the animations that you could do some level of dual wielding or you, know, you can hit control and your left click um, to raise your shield and you know that has a certain sort of uh, cool cool down in the sense that when I release it it's going to take a second for the shield to come down and I could already start to initiate my regular click to bring the sword around so that by the time the shield comes down the sword is already in motion ready to chop that kind of thing so that there are ways that you know if you're holding something in your left hand and your right hand you could potentially juggle some animations between them but that's up to you and your skill and how you've configured them and you know Eventually, um, you know, the swing speed, um, uh, lead in speed, um, etc., will be based on, um, on uh, character strength, uh, weapon uh, tool, weight, length, mass characteristics. So if you're a weak character and, you know, it's a big long pole arm with a giant lead thing on the end, then it's going to potentially you will never get it up to the height to do the regular animation. Like no matter how high you look, you'll never get it up in time to perform a regular animation. But um, all these things will sort of drag the gravity of it down. And so you develop weapons of the materials that your character can use balance of the materials becomes important you know, because the um uh what the the inertial the inertia tensor um that's calculated for the tool becomes important where its center of gravity is which axes it rolls around easier on that kind of thing they all be they all come into play with your speed with your strength and maybe your dexterity that kind of thing so then you design weapons, lightweight weapons that work for characters who are weak um, but have good dexterity and, and heavy weapons for characters that are strong, that kind of thing. Um, yeah. So there was a reason, there was something I was doing here that made me 
think of that. Oh, it was the the dual handed thing. Um, anyway, there's the whole idea is to make it as flexible as possible, so you guys can figure out the game physics and design cool weapons and tools that work within that system, and we'll learn things together. I like the idea of emergent behavior, emergent systems. Put some simple systems in place and uh, make them interact with each other and then potentially get some cool stuff out of that. And I get to be surprised by the things that the players come up. I get to learn from you guys, which would be kind of cool. Um, so yeah, I added this frame debug thing. Star Wars Obi-Wan. I either don't get the reference um, or I've missed something. Um, or both. Um, the, the set debug frame. Long frame. So at some point I added this um, where when I'm logging I can log what frame is being run. And I like that capability, especially when I'm do, do, do. especially when I'm um, trying to debug multiple things together. All oh, extra. Oh, right, 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 right. I do know. I do know what you're talking about now. Okay, so we want this. Actually, let's put it nearby. And then I can cut and paste this over here. And when I remove it, I can remove them together. It's a bad uh, practice to do this. Um, but for temporary code, I find it sometimes nice. If I'm going to get rid of this someday, then they're both together. It's really not good code style. And the fact that I just ignore my check style findings means I can get away with stuff like that. Stuff I never get away with in the day job because they won't even let you... They don't really let the build pa they won't even let the build pass with stuff like this. <laughs> Which I think is, you know, I don't know. I appreciate that all the code is consistent, but sometimes you just gotta break the rules, man. Alright, so then dot frame gets changed to set debug frame. Okay, so let's try again. Um, oh, right. Duh. Okay, everything else was a warning. Yeah, I think if I'm not really close to a release next week, I'll consider writing some music, I think. We'll see. I'm hoping my week starts to free up about Wednesday. We had like, um, at day job, we had, you know, several months worth of work to get done in like t three weeks. And that is Wednesday, this coming Wednesday. So we're going to miss that deadline. Um, I just, I mean, unless I waste a miracle, um, we're probably going to miss that deadline. But presuming not then my time frees up considerably because I'm no longer critical path for a bunch of people and so on and so forth. Oh, it's just a beautiful time of day in Mithruna. Okay, so... Let's see. Swing. Oh, that's a swing left. <laughs> uh, it not do nothing. Oh, no. That's because it's called swing left. All right. Well, swing down should work. Oh, <laughs> it's backwards. <laughs> um, yeah, it's swinging up. Okay. Good job, Fade. <laughs> also probably 
Um, it needs to be 0.4. We're going to have to sort of eyeball the center here because 0.5 is not really 0.5. Um, no, I want to. So this is the thing. All of this. Um, where's my thing, right? Um, inverse kinematics. Kinematics. Um, so this is the thing. Um, this would solve a lot of problems. A lot. Um, it's inevitable to have this, right? It's also super hard to do right. Okay. So I could invest time. I could invest time in inverse kinematics and lots of time, like maybe six months. Serious. <laughs> right. Or I can hack in animations that uh, parameterized animations that move us along. So this is what I've chosen to do, right? So I have, um, I have for fade, I have uh, basically a swing right to left animation for up at the top and a swing right animation for down at the bottom. And then I can, you know, mix between them and set the time. And that's what I used to when you hit click before and you could swing around. That's what I was using. I was just basically parameterizing those animations, which is, um, I think, going to get me pretty far. Um, you know, inverse kinematics, it's the same thing with ragdolling. Um, I'm ragdolling in my physics system, non-trivial. Eventually, I will switch to a different physics system, but I have to integrate it with my you know, sort of zoning. All of these things sort of happen together. When I replace my physics engine core with something else, and I don't know what that something else is yet, but presumably it has proper joints and those kind of things. Again, it solves a lot of problems. I'm focusing today on getting, as, getting to content because I really think I can come back and deal with those things later. So I'm cheating. I'm cheating every way I can um, to get to the point where we can go fight monsters and get a feel for how that's going to be. And then we can just keep improving, you know, this, this kind of stuff. Yeah, so not only does she... It's also not a very satisfying chop. I think when it's... Perhaps when it's going in the right direction, it'll be better. Anyway, yes, inverse kinematics would solve a lot of problems. It would solve the walking problem when we're going upstairs and stuff, too. Um, there's a whole bunch of things. Like, like when we get to climbing, I'm going to have to create so many custom animations to deal with transitions and things. Um, that inverse kinematics would deal with a lot of. Now, inverse kinematics is not free. You get, um, for one thing, it takes a lot of power. The other thing is it occasionally screws up for no good reason um, and then your model goes crazy. The one thing about hand done animations, if I make a hand climbing animation, so if I actually have an animation where she puts her hand on the edge and f you know flips up her legs and gets up there, um, that will always look better in the, in the specific cases than inverse kinematics. But it would be nice to have IK you know, to salt in there yeah, to salt in there to ease the transition so that this was a little higher or a little lower than the animation was set up for, that it could use IK to kind of um, neaten it up, which is where, where IK really shines. Like if we had here and her feet were IK, then if she stepped over a rock, you know, it would look right. If she's walking upstairs, it would look right. Um, anyway, we'll get to there. There's so much stuff to do just to get to a playable game. That's what I'm focusing on. I want to be able to fly airships. I want to be able to go into dungeons and kill monsters. I want to be able to take the loot back to town, sell it. 
I want to be able to you know build my own town and hire my M hire NPCs to come work in my town. I want all that stuff, and IK doesn't get me there, so so it's going to have to be secondary. All right, so let me fix the bugs that we already know that I wrote in. That's what we do. We watch Paul write bugs and then watch Paul fix the bugs. And this is what we call entertainment. Um, K. I'm K. So first, the thing was that it's named wrong in the um, in the uh, test objects. So this is the fun edutainment so this is the if i ever go through these and i extract little one and two minute clips um to make as youtube shorts and you know where i was talking about how um it would be fun to then as i'm dealing with this problem to go back and play the little clip about how i talked about how this was really fragile putting these two strings <laughs> in multiple places because now i'm gonna have to go and fix them all um, fortunately, it's an easy search and replace, but that would have been a fun one to recut with my little clip there. Okay, so replace, 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 replace. Okay, so that fixes swing left, actually B swing left. Um, we'll go back over here to player driver. And actually, no, we want the swing down activity to mix these backwards. So 1.0 minus y. And then we want to configure what center is. Because 0.5 was not right. Um, let's try 0.4, which I think will not be right also. But we can start to uh, see that's the other problem with having hard-coded 0.5 everywhere um, I gotta find there we go okay I think that's everything let's see if I fixed things or not I've been doing a lot of thinking about the meta game recently. Like when you've played some character in a world for, you know, 40 hours or whatever, and you go to start a new character in a new world, um, you know, do you get a leg up from the stuff you already discovered, other than just general knowledge? So trying to figure out what you can carry over, what the trade-off is. I think, um, without spoiling too much, I think the death system and um, skill progression, no, there's no skill progression per se, because I'm anti-XP, but I think your player's age will be important. I think you'll age and that um, you'll have ways of reversing your aging and stuff like that. And so one of the penalties you can um, if you die and go to the afterlife or whatever, one of the ways you can come back is to sort of relinquish some years of your life or something. But I think then that's also an easy gateway to potentially expend years of your a new character's life to pull skills. Basically, you add history to yourself by starting later in your life and allow you to pull skills and things that you had already learned as another character. So if you pick up the ability to um you know do a certain kind of crafting or you know paint pictures or whatever it is um make maps you know if you pick up these abilities in one game then you can transfer them to um arthritis win yeah well these care you so okay so one second <laughs> put a pin in that <laughs> um so um 
you know, if you've de if you've developed, a, learned, found a bunch of skills, train, you know, trained with the right people to gain the skills in one game and play through that you might be able to transfer them to another um, by expending years of your life. And they'll be part of your character's history at that point, um, because there's eventually going to be when you have your journal here, there's going to be eventually your history, your story, all the things you've done. And the first part of that is sort of your basic background that you chose when you create your character. And some of that background could be the previous skills you've already developed. So if you started your character with map making skill, with painting skill, because um, you you chose to gave, give up base years of your life or whatever, that's the youngest you can ever be in the game. Um, that potentially that adds to your history, you know, how you got those skills and stuff like that. I don't know. It's all kind of pie in the sky, be neat, but um, I digress. But the arthritis win. So one thing is that the nature of your character being a magical being in a world that you don't belong in, you live a lot longer than the other characters. So, um, you know, so you have like an elven kind of lifespan. So your years matter, but you don't age quite as fast as the regular Mithrunian denizens. So humans in the Mithruna world are also aged. Like, even though we're in kind of a medieval setting, it would not be uncommon for them to live to 100 years, for example. It's just generally healthier, longer lived. Anyway, what were you doing? We, that's right, we were swinging things. So let's see. Um, let's see, swing left still work? Boink, boink, boink. Okay, swing down still work? Oh, it's still backwards. How is it still backwards? That doesn't make any sense. Unless I changed the wrong thing. Well, let's see what we did with the... And so, whoops. So we're about as wrong off-center in the wrong direction. So I'll just split the difference between 0.4 and 0.5. And that'll get us in the center. And then I have to figure out why... Maybe I, why, I'm one, oh, I didn't, there's two places I have to do the one minus y thing, and I only did it in one. So this is when we're, um, yeah. So that's why we were upside down. And let's make the center 0.45. See, when I have an actual swing down animation, I won't have to worry about that. It will not be a mix. So... But I do want the characters to, uh, you know, as they get older, to get wrinkles and gray hair and stuff like that. And strength and dexterity to be muted and things. So there is a penalty for being old. But, like, I don't know. I haven't figured out the exact numbers. But, like, on a 200-year time scale for players. I don't know. I have to think about... It may actually depend on how long people normally play the game for. Um, before switching worlds or whatever. So we have to see. Because I don't want to set a, I don't want to set a maximum age so high that nobody ever reaches it because they get bored with a particular world before they get there. So I have to look at how fast game years tick by, and compare that to play time. Because you know, a day is 24 minutes, or a, a Mithrunian day is 24 minutes. Is that right? Yeah. Um. And so, in a year. Oh, so a month is um, four weeks, so 28 days, and there's only four months in a year. Each each month represents a season. Um, so time ticks by a little quicker. Um, so I need to think about how many hours it takes to go through a year, how many game hours it takes to go through a year. And so it may be that human regular human lifespans are, are closer to what we want. And then as soon as you start to get the, like, 60, 70, 80. Could be just raw percentages of your um, inverse percentages of your um, normal stuff or whatever. Um, okay, so let's see. Swing down. Shook, shook, shook. Yeah, so we're inside of ourselves. So, But we're right there in the center. Let's flip to the tool that's already oriented for <laughs> vertical swinging tool that's oriented correctly yeah so we're right there chopping chopping in the middle so we should be able to chop that right there boink 
Boink, except for we're not quite close enough. Boink, there we go. Boink, boink, boink. Ah, that's cool. It's like really slow though. We need to speed up the overhand swing for sure. <laughs> right. Um, because normally even a sword would be over the shoulder, um, more elbow, right? So the real animation will be over the shoulder and, um, yeah. And so, and so then the, even for the pickaxe, um, like the pickaxe will be different though. It will be more over the shoulder. Like you won't necessarily swing back as far. I don't know. I haven't worked that out. So it's probably split the difference. But anyway, so that part's working. Whack, 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 whack. But the, uh, I don't want to adjust the, um, that's interesting. So as soon as she starts running to there, it kills the animation because it's, her body is hitting it. That's something I'll have to fix too. It's like she, like it's taking all contacts and killing the animation, not just the contacts with the tool. Anyway, it's working. Okay, so selectable. Whack, whack, whack. See, there's a lot more. It goes faster because there's more space to take, you know, so it's a, based on like two seconds that the axe will go from here to here, thousand one, you know, or maybe one second, I can't remember. And because there's more distance, it moves faster, whereas the top to bottom, it's not. So I don't want to tweak it too much until we have the real over the shoulder animation. And I'm trying to think, Hmm. I'm trying to think how I want to deal with the tool orientation. For one thing, let's go and fix all of the miss. So the sword is right, I think. Each of these guys is wrong. I set it up that way so that the, this would work right. But... Um, But this is really something that our hands should have twisted for. So I have to look at that. And so it's the same thing as these, these two need to have their, um, they, they're wrong in her hand, I think. Um, like if you look, I think that's the wrong orientation in the hand. It should be facing up towards the thumb, right? Like the sword does. So this is the way that, so that looks right in the hand. You know what, I forget that I can um, go to here and actually look at what these look like <laughs> from all angles. See, this is correct in my opinion. That's the way the hand should hold it. And, as we're, and if we're swinging side to side, then the wrist should turn. I'm just trying to figure out if I really want to make that a part of the animation or fix it in code. They both have their trade-offs. I tell you, it, it pleases me <laughs> that she's still wearing her original outfit from when I painted it seven years ago, except for this is a built out of um, her, it, this is built out of actual clothing, you know, from the clothing system. Yeah, so got all these, uh, yeah, long style query er warnings. Um, so how do we want to fix that? Yes, yeah, so we got all those little. Whack. <laughs> 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 uh, 
Oh, it's back. We waited five minutes. Yeah, see, some of these are not really here on the server. Oh, that's interesting. It's getting stuck. Are we hitting ourselves? Oh, we're getting a weird... Um, Yeah, I keep seeing this underflow. So there's a bug in the destructible object system. It's um, finding a contact where it shouldn't. Um, oh, mm -hmm. that should never happen either. Okay, so there's still a bunch of glitches to work out. You guys will probably find 50 or 60 more when I finally get this released. I'm trying to think what to work on next for the next 30 minutes or so. We could start messing with the animations. Um, let me start up Blender and see what that looks like. But that's pretty good. I think we're on the right track. This will be more parameterized in the future because, like I said, when you're chaining actions together, I need to skip the ramp up um, and potentially shorten the lead in for the action that's chained so that you get some benefit to chaining them together. Um, let me find my blender icon. Is that you over there, blender icon? Yeah, blender copy, yep. So I tried running a newer version of blender at one point that I had, you know, had to find a version specifically built for Windows 7, um, because they don't support it anymore. And it messed up some of my GLTF exports, so I went back to the old version, but I renamed it. Um, okay, so there's my doggy. And oh boy, which one, which one, which one, which one? Is it the cleaned? Okay, I don't want to load the wrong one. It's easier for the other. Because the other thing is, it could be under here. Aha! Uh -huh. And still I'm left with the question. Which one am I actually using? Yay! So if I look... in the rigs um, human remail too <laughs> I really need to fix it so human female 1k GLTF okay I suppose I could have looked at when they were saved so cleaned I must have copied in here and then Human female one K blend is the real one, so you guys get to watch me stumble around Blender again. Allow execution. My so all of my tools for Mithruna, you know, the blockhead, shaper and stuff, they use WASD to rotate the camera around, and I always get in here and it takes me a second to remember to use the mouse. Okay, so we are in pose mode already. And so we have this um, swing up. So this is this is the blending for the left, right. Um, yeah, hopefully I'm not going to get content more. <laughs> Sorry, YouTube. Um, Hopefully nobody flags me for naked fade. So see, she's got this um, really high swing that goes, uh, does it go forward and back? Yeah, hmm.
Oh, yeah, so we could loop, right? Halfway through, halfway through. That's interesting. It's interesting I did it that way. And then we've got the the down version, which, you know, does the reverse, basically. It's interesting. So I think I always cap it at one second which is 24 frames, which is why we never see the other. So I think what I want to do, oh, you know what? Let's do this so I can still see the chat. Hello, chat. Hello, the chat. Um, if I hit end, does this go away? It does. OK, so. I wonder if I go like this and like this, this will be enough and then I don't get potential strikes from having a fake naked character on my, anyway. I don't know if that's really an issue, but I'd prefer not to find out. All right, so what do we want? We want to... We want to go to default pose, default pose. OK. We want to, with this create a new action, yeah, create a new action, um, swing down left shoulder, no, right shoulder. So this will be from over her right shoulder down, kind of straight down. And I wonder why I, I think I made that swing back up for a reason. I think, I think. Um, anyway, um, where's the one I want? I don't think I'm set up for IK here. Nope, I'm fully forward, um, whatever, the, the other non-inverse kinematics. Um, okay, so we want to pose her as if she's swinging her arm over her shoulder. So I think we'll start with um, maybe like this. Oh, wait. Um, so that's where we start, and then we want to go all the way to frame 24. And there is... Yeah, see, we get, um, weird pinching because of the, um, can I? is I'm not 
100% familiar with um, some of the dynamics of this particular rig. Yeah, so see if we had done that. <laughs> you look ridiculous, Fade. Um, yeah. This is not at all what I want. Um, what's the control R? No. Altar. Um, a altar. So we'll just start over. There is, um, trying to, we've got to raise her shoulder blade. And so I think I'm trying to, I don't have a mirror, and so I'm trying to, like, move my own arm. Um, and I, I was trying to figure out this rig a little bit. Uh, that will be better. And then these, I think, are, like, a different kind of rotation. Yeah. But I do think that will come into play. Yeah, I think that's for the kinematics, though. So the, these, I don't... Oh, what's this? Nothing. Um, these, I don't... Oh! That could be useful. Okay, so she's leaning over. And... We'll rotate her shoulder. Isn't this fun? Some of that's a weight painting problem. Um, right? Because, like, So if I rotate this around. Okay, man. I'll probably be done by then. I don't know how much longer I'm going to mess with this animation. I'd like to see it in the game, but we'll see. It's nice nice chatting with you. Um, okay, so let's see if we rotate this around. Yeah, it's not really doing anything for me. Oh, you just got back. Oh, sorry. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I'm trying to, like, get a passable animation here over the shoulder. Um, but, you know, my rig... Uh, but my rig's not really set up for it um easily so i think we're getting close um i wonder can i scale this oh that's bad we don't want to do that can i move it over yeah that's also bad we don't want to do that what does this do okay that moves her whole body which is not a whole lot different than that other one did um what about this can i Oh, hmm. Yeah, so I have to sit with my own muscles at some point, my own bones. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, my goodness. So maybe we... Um, let's start over again. Um, let me get this part right. 
because um, that should be directly like this if we want to. And the hands should still be in line. We want to rotate it slightly like this. And I think I think these are a scale to get the <sighs> blender always selecting the wrong thing okay so that we can close the fist um, I think I think, um, yeah, and then it's kind of in line, but I want to rotate it a little bit more this way, I think. And then maybe more this way. Like, we're already going to be ugly. Let's just be ugly. Okay. And then... This is where it all goes bad. Now see, this would be perfect for getting closer to... I just want the other shoulders also. Let's do here and rotate around. Yeah, see? It's not rotating the way I want. Let's rotate like this. She causes a weird twist. And let's move you out a little bit. Okay, that is not too bad. I have a. F yeah, so when they're holding a sword, the sword's going to be way back here. So this is not bad. And I need to chop through the center, so. Alright, so what all did I change? And um, probably, no, also no, definitely no, that's the one, let's see, yeah, I just feel like, I mean, this makes everything else wrong, but, um, Yeah, so let me see. What do I what do I do? Yeah, that's very close. My hand would come pretty close to my head if I was performing this action. But we'll move it back just a little. Okay. Now I have to remember all of the things I changed. Um but I usually don't. And so I will just Insert a frame. Just rotation, though. Well. Yeah. So it tells me everything is the same. You actually can... There's actually a function to clean that up. Okay, so that is... That should have been my starting position, in fact. Right. So that's fun. Okay. And so this needs to be all the way down, which is pretty close to where we start with. Um, so we'll with that and so now we've got whack 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 except for I want to come back more because this sticks us out here and I'd rather have it down here to have a little bit more follow-through also um, 
She's going to have to rotate her whole torso because this is not at all in the center, right? We need it coming through her center line of sight. So we'll have to fix that as well. And that, my friends, is the sound of the Pepsi emptying. Okay. So let us deal with that for a second. Like, we want... What level of torso rotation do I want? No. Uh, okay, so first of all, she would swing back like this and that is why these were okay before slightly rotated in um, yeah so that she can have a follow through that's through her line of sight um, So the other thing is I'm going to want to keep that hand. Okay, so let's uh, set this as a keyframe. Um, let me select all the hand bone thingies. And copy that and paste it. Oh, wait. Copy that and paste it. Oh, it was already... Hmm. Oh, because those were scales, and I only... Yeah, all right. All right. Um, okay. Okay, so then she needs to be... Rotate around Z like this. So what does that do for us? Oh no, I didn't insert the shoot. Oh, that's not right. Yeah, she would want to follow through But she would be f still the the object that she was holding would still be facing did it turn her head nope she's still looking forward that's good Oh, I know what it is. It's like partway through, she's forward, and then it would come back again. So this is um, okay for 12 frames. Let's make it 13. That's fine. And then here we would want to be coming back again. No, maximum forward right there, I think. Swap. Yeah, that's better. It's not great. It's not perfect. And now I know why I had that go in reverse, because that's what we want. Yeah. Okay, so it's still not right, but it's getting there. Um, and at some point I've got to just get it into the game to see. Okay, so it's coming down 
and we want that position this is actually kind of good um, oh the other thing we want her wrist to follow through so up here we want this to rotate back a bit right yep insert rotation scan and then as it's coming through yeah right there that's good right there I think no, we probably want this to be, okay, um, where's my, there it is, this is frame 16. Um, we probably want this to be rotated forward a bit, like this, because the, you got to think of the weight of the tool coming down here. Right, Sh this is the tools coming out like this or the sword or whatever um, yeah so you're yeah I think um, and then right. yeah and then way extended back this way so this would be rotated down like this so whack that uh, I'm gonna turn that off because that's very distracting um, wow. Wow. okay let's look at her front on and s and try to imagine that tool it's going right down her center yeah nice but we want to rotate a little bit more, I think. Whoops. Rotate Z a little bit more. Okay, so the other problem is, and I might need to, see the thing is we can't see her hand, we can't see what the, um, what something would look like in the hand, so we kind of have to imagine it. Yeah. Um, I'm going to tweak this a little more and then get it in the game. You'll see what I'm talking about. Like her wrist needs to rotate forward or she's really kind of stroking in here. Like if we get it halfway up, see. Yeah, so let's look at it from the top, right? We want her to be slicing right through the center of this um, point of view because eventually that's going to lock the camera. Um, and so if you imagine the tool coming up like this, the tool is still in her line of sight straight up, but right about here, it's, it's not at all. Um, and it's like facing off to the side. So I think we can rotate this back in line And then we want to, again, imagine this All right, I think we probably just messed a whole bunch of stuff up. I 
that's not even too bad. Um, I don't think I can rotate the fingers. Can I? I think it's probably best to stick to rotating the wrist. Um, so let's look at it without any perspective. I think that this needs to actually rotate a little this way and a little this way. I keep hitting the wrong Okay, so let's insert that, let's see what that's doing. See, this is... I think this needs to come down more towards the body. So it comes down kind of straight. Yeah. This whole thing. So on some level, players will get used to where something swings. It's going okay. I get caught up in animation and perfectionism. Um, and perhaps that's not a productive thing to do. Um, so let's cap this at 24. And so it will ugly, ugly move. And so I probably need to reverse it. But without seeing it in game, I'm not going to know what to fix at this point. So let's, I can't remember if I need to push down or stash or both. So let's push down. Where's my... Dash. Now it should have an. Ah, uh, it does not. So what do I save it? Yeah, fake user. So then it'll have an F as well. Yeah. Okay. So we want to go back to default pose. We want to select fade. I believe. Oh, we need to get out of pose mode. Okay, so we need to select fade, save the thing, and then we export GLTF. Human female 1K. All right. And we 
wait and we wait and we wait. Yeah, because I tend to keyframe every joint, I select all of them and I keyframe all of them. It makes for really huge animations. Um, it takes a really long time to save the GLTF. At some point, I'm going to have to optimize all that. But not today. It's funny, I get really attached to these, but they're really supposed to be temporary models. Um, someday I would like to hire somebody who knows what they're doing. And um, to keep the same look, but to sort of re-rig them and, you know, properly set them up. The better I get at it, the closer they get, but I have to remind myself that I'm pouring work into what's ultimately temporary. Um, okay, so did I... When I did the, was it the butterfly or was it Kaylee? Yeah, no, it was, it was the, the butterfly too. I was smart and I moved where I pick up the GLTF so that I didn't have to copy it all the time. So if I come over here and I do something similar, Um, so that I just wrote that out so yeah so let's try um, a similar thing here it will save me so much time so, human, female, and then over here, it's basically dot, 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 same thing, only just the directory, okay. Okay, so... Let's see if that works. Yeah, because I think I was always copying the... What was it used to be? It was source, main, rigor, it was models, human, female. Hmm, see that's got a lot more Here, normal map. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. I'm not going to do this today. Um, it's dangerous because I just, I don't know if I have all the textures and stuff there. So then I got to remember to do this. Um, I really wish I'd set this up better to begin with. There we go. Source, main, what do I call it? Rigor, human, female. Nope, models, human, female. Models, human, female. Should say, do you want to overwrite it? Yes. Great old run, rigor. All right, let's see if she still loads or if I screwed something up and and how badly I screwed it up. All right, open human remail two. Yeah. What is the error? Oh, I didn't copy the bin file. <sighs> There's got to be, yep. All right. 
try again. The easy things I don't mind running run down. If it gets complicated, I may have to end the stream. But I would like to see the swing in the game. Just to see. Okay, she loads now. Um. Oh. Mm. Her, uh, see, her idle animation picked up that rotation. Uh, see, there's something wrong with the idle animation. It, it, um, it doesn't fully key all the stuff. Yeah, so she's got a, a twitch now. So I'll have to fix that. Um, swing down right shoulder. Boing, 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 boing. Now we don't see what kind of tool she'd be holding. Actually, we could hand right see if we could see it in slow motion we could see what the tool was going to be looking like um, but swing down right shoulder I can fix the idle later um, so let's go back to idle yeah that twitch in her hand if it wasn't so obnoxious it's not bad actually to have players have a little tick or something but um, okay so let's compile the binary and it's called swing down right shoulder okay so we're going to temporarily break all of the other rigs I just want to really see this in the game and who sets up the Something sets up the animation config. There is no mix in this case. Swing down right shoulder and then set time going to be why we don't have to set a mix anymore although then yeah there's no mix for this oops okay but there's I've got to do something to configure that um, swing And I don't remember, I bet it's here. Let me make sure I've got the right name for a class. Nope. Um, oops. It is, what is it? Is it part of the, ah, so, yeah animation config so agent driver game session manager yeah okay I was right or game game session host service I just had was searching for the wrong class oops aha okay here we go. We need swing down right shoulder. Okay. Eventually I'm going to run out of slots that I can put in a single layer config. I may have already. Yeah, so there is no mix. All right, let's see what I blew up. 
La 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 la. We'll see what breaks. I'd like to see it once in the game, you know, before we call it quits for the night. It's just one of those things. And I can spend the endless process of tweaking that animation to be just perfect. I'm actually okay as long as it goes through where we're looking, kind of. Um, but we'll see. It has to just, uh, there's a feel to it, right? It has to feel right, like you can predict where you're going to be hitting to some extent. And there may be a case where I start moving that little cursor around depending on what you have selected, I don't know, to help you predict where you're gonna swing. Yep, nighttime in Mithruna. Okay. So let's swing down. What are we holding the sword? Ready? Whoa, look at that. Nice. So it's not perfect. Let's try to chop this uh, boink, boink. Why isn't it chopping though? Oh, it is. It had chopped those sections already, it just didn't show. Okay. So, it looks okay. Um, again, it's hard to tell which bug I'm hitting. Um, there's some weirdness in the slice. Right, it does this little weird S thing. I don't know if you guys can pick that up. So somewhere in the middle of the slice, it needs to be over here. All right, right about here, it does this little thing like that. It should come straight down through there. So the middle of the animation, I need to move out. And then it'll be pretty good. What does it look like from the side? Yeah. Her shoulders move weirdly right it's like they m my gut says they're moving late like they're f following the action instead of leading the action so I need to mess with that and from this angle it's not as bad yeah follow through looks okay shoulders move and then the arm comes through it's okay, but there's something about that beginning of the swing. Anyway, I get wrapped around the axle. I just need to line it up with the center, and then this is totally good enough. Um, and then I need to fix all of these to have the right orientation, right? And then I need to fix everything to do with the swing left to twist her hand. So I need to go back and fix those animations so that her hand is twisted so that the tool is held in the right direction. But then I think we're pretty good. I mean, this is a, I think this is decent for a, um, like if I wanted to start chopping stuff away, boink, 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 right? I mean, this is, this is decent if I wanted to start chopping away at stone and stuff like that. Um, let's go do the weird thing with the tree doink 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 right you know you can't actually like whack these things because oh we can actually oh nice so that you know that looks wrong but um so if it's facing in the right direction i think this would look okay i still need to fix that shadow problem boink 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 yeah see this is what I'm dealing with right now. And this is my focus will be fixing this garbage um, that it's missing our hits. So, oh, interesting. Okay. Yeah, so the other thing is like occasionally the object self-selects and um, 
you get that little unequip action and i accidentally clicked that one time and yep it's sure enough it unequipped it so there that's got to change we can't have the default action ever come up like that just because our view happened to be over the object we're holding um anyway i think that's a good place to end it i think we got a lot done tonight um you can see all my doo-doo from those things i've still got to fix and we've got you know basic kind of choppy choppy animation and I might speed it up a little bit, but maybe not. It's all right. It's kind of all right. Yeah, nice big whack that took out four blocks. That's kind of cool. All right. Um, any last questions before I call it a night? Thank you for joining me. Um, if you've hung out for this long and you're not a subscriber, uh, I don't know. That's weird. Um, Thanks for watching, but if you think about it, subscribe. I like to see that number go up, and it seems like I get one new subscriber maybe every two weeks, which is kind of cool. Um, slow growth is growth, right? Um, we'll go ahead and uh, do this thing. You know, like the video if you hung out this long. That's another thing. If you watched, if you watched me rattle on for two hours and you didn't like it, well, maybe we should have a discussion about that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thanks for joining, guys. I hope you have a productive week on any of the things you're working on this week. And if you're not on the Discord, join the Discord, and we can continue to chat, and I'll post little pictures and videos of things I work on. Otherwise, I will see you guys next week. Um, same bat time, same bat channel, so on. Thanks for joining me. Ta-ta.